All right, so a couple of years back, I did a tutorial on how to get the kind of fake e-guitar sound. You know, the kind of sound which it doesn't sound 100% like an e-guitar, but it doesn't even really sound too much like a synth. It's kind of a hybrid in between. And at the time I was using live just for my live sets. I was using Pro Tools and the synth that came with it, which was Hybrid 3 by Air Music Technology. I have since switched to Ableton for everything I do. And so I thought it was high time to do an updated version of that video where I recreate that sound or something in the ballpark using only Ableton's stock plugins. And uh, if you are an Ableton Live user, no matter which edition you have, you're going to be able to follow along because as you probably know, if you've been following this channel for any amount of time, I'm using Ableton Live Lite, which is an incredible piece of software and you can easily work around all of its supposed limitations. And if you're interested in how to do that, I have a playlist with four videos at the moment where I show you how to kind of work around those limitations and turn this into effectively a full-fledged dog. So playlists up there in case you're interested but let's get going with this tutorial right here so let me go to my user library here and find my guitar preset i'm using instrument racks for my presets because as you know you can put all kinds of devices in there so you have your sound generators your synths or samplers and then you have extra effects and you can also map different parameters to macro. So that's why I saved everything as an instrument rack. And here's my guitar lead preset. So let's load that up. And it sounds something like this. Okay, so that's kind of the sound of it. And let's uh, have a look at the different effects we have. And then we're gonna recreate this song from scratch. So first we have Drift, which is the only real synthesizer you get if you're an Ableton Live Lite user. Sure, you get a bunch of different sounds here, which are all made using Ableton's premium synths like Wavetable and Analog and Operator, etc. But if you try and load up any one of those, as you can see, you only really have control over eight parameters. So the only full-fledged synth you get is Drift. And so, yeah, I have an instance of that. I mean, it's a very simple sound to recreate, but it's good to have a synth where you have access to all parameters. And then next we have a kind of homemade format filter. If you've been watching the old tutorial, you know that this is one of the critical aspects of the sound. And Ableton doesn't come with a stock format filter. So basically, Ableton Live's effects here are just like building blocks and you can combine them in different ways to create complex effects. I'm gonna have a detailed look at those later, but just to show you that you can actually create your format filter. And then the third most important ingredient here is of course an M simulator of some sort. I believe other editions of Ableton come with an M device. I don't have that in light, but I do have a saturator, so I use that. And then like this last effect here, purely up to your personal taste. The sound I got was just a tad bit too harsh for me. So as you can see, I just rolled up a bit of the highs there, but uh, this very much depends on the material you have as well, right? So if you're working on a dark synth kind of track then you probably don't need this effect at all. Good, so those are kind of our three building blocks. Let's deactivate all of these effects here and start having a look at our sound. So we start with this. Just a, a very standard sawtooth lead. So let's have a look at the oscillator section here in Drift. I deactivated the noise oscillator. I even deactivated oscillator number two. So we're just using one oscillator. The volume you can leave at minus six. I believe this is the default value. The octave as well, you can set to zero. Just remember to use a sawtooth waveform. So everything I believe here is set to its default value. All I'm doing is I am modulating the shape but not with this uh, slide parameter. I have actually assigned this to my first macro here. You can just right click. And in your case, it will say map to macro one. In my case, it says unmap from that because I've already mapped it. And then the mapping menu here, you can set a minimum and a maximum value. And in my case, I thought it was very interesting to set this between zero and 0.1. And the reason for that, I'm going to show you right now, you can hear it, but you can also see it in the waveform display down here. So when the shape parameter is set to zero, the waveform display shows you basically two sawtooths, right? This one in the middle, and then you have one half and the second half of another kind of sawtooth. But when I activate my macro here, all of a sudden we have one, two, three, and two halves. So that's four sawtooths. So that's twice the amount. And that means we're pitching things up by an octave, right? 
And that is gonna come in very handy to kind of emulate guitarists creating harmonics. You strum your string, but then you immediately block it with your thumb and create those nice harmonics. This is how we can emulate that. Good. Moving on to the filter section, I didn't even care to touch anything here. So you can leave everything here set to default. And now this you might want to change though. So I personally don't have any keyboards with after touch control. So press is after touch, right? So I wouldn't be able to access this modulation. But if you do have after touch, you want to set this to zero probably. The second envelope isn't assigned to anything. So don't even bother setting that up. You do want to mess with the amplitude envelope a bit. So I set attack and release time to their smallest possible values and then I set sustain to 100%. So basically we're getting a gate kind of sound. So when you press our key, we get all of the sound all at once. And then as we release our finger from the keyboard, the sound immediately disappears. Good. Moving on to the modulation section. I don't think this one right here is set to zero by default. So just double click on it to set it to zero. We don't want to use any of those. All we want to do is we want our LFO to modulate the pitch. And let me deactivate this section down here. I'm going to go back to that later, just so you hear what this does. So you want to set the pitch mod LFO to 2% and the speed of the modulation is going to be about 250 milliseconds and the shape of the wave modulating the pitch sine works triangle would probably work as well um, and it sounds something like this right so this is kind of going to emulate when a guitarist moves their left hand finger up and down detuning the string they just drummed kind of, you know, give that vibrato sort of effect. Obviously, you don't want that effect to be on all the time. You want to kind of assign it to one of your controllers. And in my case, I chose the mod wheel. And then you want to set the amount to 100% both here and here. And now set it to its neutral position, which is zero. No modulation. And as I move my wheel all the way up to 100%, and then back to zero, Right, so now we have control over when the effect kicks in. Good, good. That leaves us with just this output section here. The volume, I think, is set to minus six by default, so don't mess with that. Velocity to volume, this is important. I want consistency, right? Especially when playing fast passages, it might happen that you hit some keys softer or harder than others, but you don't want that to affect your sound in any way. You want a consistent sound across the board. And so I set this to zero. Uh, play mode, you want to set to mono because you might've noticed that we are going to distort the crap out of this. And so if we were to allow more than one note to be played at any given moment, that would increase the output by a certain amount, which would mess with our distortion. So we're going to keep this set to mono so that you only ever get to play one note at any given moment. This slider here, it's uh, the mono thickness slider. I think turning this up will add some extra octaves, which you don't want to do because again, that will mess with your distortion later down the road. So leave this set to zero as well. The drift parameter is just this funny little thing that is kind of changing some parameters at random to give everything more of an organic kind of feel. So I left this set to default as well. Legato, uh, you can turn it on or off. doesn't really matter, right? Because we have a kind of gate envelope here. And so like out of us and really do anything. Pitch band we want to have active, of course. We want to be able to, you know, pitch notes up and down. Uh, the range you can leave set to two semitones. And then the glide parameter, uh, this one is pretty cool too. I have assigned it to macro number two. And let's have a listen to what that sounds like. So normally when I switch from one note to the next, nothing special happens, but if I activate the effect, So, you know, this kind of emulates a guitarist sliding their hand up and down the neck to some extent. I just thought it was cool to have that extra little layer of modulation that you could apply. Good, so that covers drift. Let's move on to our format filter. And as you can see, I have an audio effect rack here and I have three separate chains. And I'm gonna show you what each of those does, starting with the third chain. And as you can see, there's no effects there whatsoever. So this is basically just a perfect copy of our original signal. And I've just turned down the volume by 12 dB. And I'm gonna mix that in with my other two chains. So let's have a listen to this first chain here. Um, I have an auto filter there set to band pass. The frequency is about 550 Hertz and the resonance is a pretty high 70%. And it sounds something like this. 
right? Now, what I did is I applied some modulation to that frequency. So the rate, the speed of the modulation is very slow. It's about 0.2 Hertz and the amount is about 1.5, which seeing as the maximum here is 30, that's about not much. Let me increase this so you can actually hear what it's doing. Right, just sweeping our band pass across the spectrum. The shape I set to triangle. So I like to stay conservative with this because you don't want it to become a distracting effect. Like you don't want it to be so strong that it kind of takes the spotlight too much. You just want it to be there doing its thing a little bit in the background so that people listening to this are going to be like, sounds like something is going on there, but I cannot quite put my finger on it. Also, this is going to add up because have a look at my first chain here. Again, that's an auto filter, same as before. I chose a different frequency this time though, about twice as high as the previous one. And I increased the resonance a bit as well. And usually as a rule of thumb, the higher you go in terms of frequency, the higher resonance you want to have. It just sounds a little more natural that way. I think that's how the human voice works as well. So uh, that's probably why. And again, I'm modulating the frequency position at a very slow 0.2 Hertz, same as before by about 1.43. And it sounds something like this. Now, in this case, the frequency being higher, you can probably hear that modulation a little better than before. Let's activate all three of our chains at the same time. So we have our two band pass filters plus the original unscathed signal. Now you can definitely hear that modulation. Again, very small amounts, but across two chains. So that's our format filter. And then of course, the third most important part to getting that sort of sound is distortion. So I went with saturator. I chose the hard curve algorithm here. I deactivated color. I didn't want any of these filters to do anything to our sound. Drive all the way up to 36 dB. So that's kind of the maximum value it could have. Soft clip. That's like having an extra instance of analog clip at the output stage. So that's making things even more distorted. Uh, just remember to turn down the output or you will blow your speakers. And now we get this. Brilliant. And again, if you're doing dark synth, this is probably where you want to leave it. But me personally, I found this was just a tad bit too harsh. So I applied this extra little filter. As you can see, just shaving off a little bit of those highs. And that is pretty much it. So this is your bass sound. And you can, of course, enhance this a little bit with some extra effects. And I'll show you some of mine as a reference. So I got all my different presets here I can select, right? And here's my guitar lead. And as you can see, there is a bunch of stuff going on here. So the first thing you might have noticed is I'm using some sends here. And so I'm sending about, uh, oops, where is it? Like minus 12 dB of our signal here to this return track, which has a pretty standard delay on it, about 250 milliseconds. Generous 72% feedback. And then I'm just making sure that each delay tab is filtered like this and I'm changing the time ever so slightly with this LFO at a rate of 0.5 and seeing as I've selected the repitch mode changing the time is actually changing the pitch a little bit so each delay tab is getting filtered and then the pitch of it is shifting as well just to add a little bit more character to it so that's one thing as you can see I'm not really adding any chorus to this one I've automated my dry wet slider to kind of have different amounts as you can see depending on the preset but for this guitar lead um zero was working well for me apparently so yeah, no chorus there. And by the way, if you're interested in how to set your preset chain up like this, I have a video on that, which you can check out here. But back to our guitar sound. I have limiter here. And as you can see, it's hardly doing anything on the higher octaves. Hardly any gain reduction. But as I move down to the lower octaves, three, maybe four dB of gain reduction. So not much really. It's not the kind of effect which you would start to notice, but I just want to get that extra little bit of consistency. And then I have an EQ here. And I know this isn't a stock plugin that comes with Ableton. In my defense, it's a stock plugin for Mac users, right? Because if you're using AU plugins, like I do, and like most people who are on a Mac would probably use, 
you have this apple folder here and there's a bunch of interesting effects and so i thought why not use this filter it's a five band eq you got three bells in the middle and then on the sides here you have either shelves or you know cuts so that's pretty cool of course i could achieve the same effect with just ableton plugins though right what i would do is i would probably use a couple instances of auto filter i would use a high pass just like that and then i would use a couple of notches like that so I might use three of these notches plus a high pass. I could achieve the same effect, but since I can do it with just one plugin and it comes stock with my laptop, I decided to just go down that road. But you know, you can definitely achieve this with Ableton stock plugins as well. So the important thing is what frequencies have I set the cuts to? So you have your standard 100 Hertz low cut filter that I'm cutting at 140, uh, 590 ish and 750 hertz and the important thing here is obviously to have some very narrow cuts so yeah here's before and after you know just cleaning it up a bit yeah that's pretty much it if you're going to recreate this kind of sound and maybe even use it in your productions i want to know about it so shoot me a comment of course if you got any questions you can ask right away as well always happy to help and yeah that being said thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next video next week take care